Alrighty. So, the plan for today is just to work through problems like we have on the practice test. Um, if you have questions about a particular one, just make sure you stop and ask. Okay. Um, and I think that's about it. So we'll test Thursday. We'll test Thursday. Anybody have any questions you can think of before we start looking at math problems? Okay. Yeah, just the first two on, on the brackets. Yes. Okay, no problem. All right. Uh, we'll get going then. Okay, so number one, it says write the radical expression using exponents. So we're just trying to rewrite it from radical form to exponent form. Okay. So the two numbers we need, we need the index right here, and then we need the exponent if we have one on whatever's in there. Okay. So our big number will stay the same. Okay. And then this one will be 3 to the 2 thirds power. Okay. I'll get that writing out of the way. The number that's on the index, uh, this one, goes in the denominator of the exponent. Okay. And if you have something other than a one, well, even if you have a one, okay, it'll go in the numerator of our fractional exponent. Okay. That's all on that one, just, just to rewrite. We don't have to calculate it or anything like that. Okay. All right, good on that one. Okay, number two, let's see if I can zoom in a little bit more here. Um, yeah. Number two says simplify the expression. So we've got a radical. This, in this case, we have a fifth root. Our index is five. We want to simplify that. Okay. So either you can think about we're looking for perfect fifths. Okay. Uh, inside the radical to bring out, or on this one to me, it's easier just to think about the factor tree. Um, I'm gonna take the number part over here at 32, break it down into its prime factors. Uh, we end up with a bunch of twos on this one. And we end up with five of those actually. So another way we could write 32 is two to the fifth power. So we can bring out a two. So we've got five twos or two to the fifth. You want to think about it that way. And then the other thing to think about is this y to the sixth. And we could break down as y to the fifth times y to the first power. So that would give us five y's. So we could bring a y out front. So we'll have the fifth root out front. Let me move that over a little bit. The fifth root. Underneath, the only thing we have left is y. We had five twos, so we can bring a two out front. We had five y's, so we can bring a, a y out front. So end up with two y, fifth root of y. Questions on that one? Okay, on that one. All right. So what, whatever the index is, whatever this number is, you have to have that many factors of something to bring one out in front. Right? So well, we're looking for five factors this time because our index was five. Okay. All right, number three. I believe yeah, number three says factor out the common factor. Okay. So if we look at the number part, four, two, and nine, I don't see anything that's in common with all three of those. Okay. Then if we look at the variable part, if we look at the x's, we do have an x in common, right? And 
the most we can bring out is one, x. And then if we look at the y's, we do have a y in common. So we can bring a y out. And we just need to figure out what we'll have left. So we had 4x squared y. Um, we're for sure going to have the 4 less. We took 1x out, so we'll have 1x left. We took the y out, so we're finished on that one. The next part, we have the minus 2. We took 1x out and we took 1y out, so that will leave us with 1y. And then on the last one, we'll have the plus 9. We took the x and the y, so that's all we have left on that one. Yep, that's it. They just said factor out the common factor, and that's all we have to do. Yeah, other questions on that one? Okay. Number four says factor the trinomial. So on this one, our leading coefficient is a one. So we don't have to work quite as hard as we do on some of the other ones. On this one, we can just say we know it's going to take x times x, x times x to get x squared. And then we need factors of two that will add together and give us three. And not too many choices on factors of two, right? one and two. So, plus one, plus two. And it's a good idea. Okay. That's our answer, but it's a good idea to check and make sure that everything works out right if you multiply it back out. Now, if we do FOIL, we get x squared plus 2x plus x plus 2. So, in the middle, we'll get 3. So, we're in good shape. Okay, that's our answer. Question on that one? Okay. Number five, we've got another trinomial to factor. We're not quite as lucky on this one because we have a leading coefficient that's something other than one. Let me get another color here. So to start off on these, we multiply the x squared term with the constant term. So negative 6x squared. And we're going to look for factors of that number, negative 6x squared, that will add together and give us negative 1x in the middle. So Let's see, we've got 1 and 6, or 2 and 3. We know we're trying to get a negative, so one of our factors has to be negative. Okay, so that helps. So what combination works? You see them? Yeah, so positive 2, negative 3 will work. Okay. So, the way I do these, again, you can do them differently if you have a method you like better. And I take and rewrite the middle term as what we just came up with, so plus 2x and minus 3x. Mm -hmm. And then I factor by grouping. Okay. So, in the first set of parentheses, I have a 2x in common. That'll leave me with x plus 1. Okay, if I look at the second set, I have a 3 in common for sure. But also, remember, we're trying to make it match our other set of parentheses. So I see that my signs are backwards, so I can factor out a negative 3. If I do that, that'll leave me with x plus 1. That way our parentheses match. And then it 
our final answer will be x plus 1 times 2x minus 3. Question on that one. Here. Okay. All right, number six. This is find the sum difference or product. So here we get a minus sign, so we're subtracting. So remember when we subtract, we've got to subtract everything that comes after that minus sign. So really, another way of thinking about this is we're going to distribute the minus sign. Okay. So if we rewrite this thing, we'll have 3 minus 3x minus 5 minus 9x. Okay. And then we just combine like terms. So we've got minus 3x minus 9x, so that's minus 12x. And then 3 minus 5, negative 2 minus 2. So not bad as long as you remember to distribute that minus sign. Questions on that one? Nothing so far? Okay, number seven says multiply, so we have a binomial times a binomial, so that's what we typically call the FOIL method. We multiply the first terms together, so 5t times 3t, get 15t squared. We do the outer terms, 5t times negative 8, negative 40t. We do the inner terms, negative 4 times 3t. That's negative 12t. And then negative 4 times negative 8 is positive 32. Okay. So then we just simplify where we can. On this one we have like terms in the middle we can combine. So we'll have 15t squared Combining our middle terms, minus 40t and minus 12t, give us minus 52t, and then plus 32. That's it, that's all we have to do, just multiply. There's no that one. Number, what we Number eight is find all real solutions of the equation by factoring. So this one does specify we need to do it by factoring. And we've got a couple where it just says find the solutions and you can do those any way you want to. Maybe this one says by factoring. So first we need to get everything on one side. So we can subtract 12 from both sides. Okay. And then to factor this one, we need factors of negative 12. So add together and give us negative 4. You think of those? I think I've got them. We do. Factors of 12. We got several. We got 1 and 12. Two and six, or three and four. We need one of them to be negative. Which ones work there? Yeah, we can do positive two and negative six. And just make sure and take your time if you're struggling finding those, list them out and make sure you get the right ones. 
And then from there, we can set each factor equal to zero. And we'll get two solutions on this one. Nope, minus two. So we'll get two and six. Questions on one like that? Okay. All right. Uh, let's see, number nine. Another quadratic just says find all real solutions. So if we get complex stuff, we don't have to worry about that. We just want real numbers here. Okay. So quadratic so we can try to factor if we want to do that not sure if this one will factor or not um, 60 has a lot of factors to choose from I think it yeah I think we can, could factor if we wanted to or we could do quadratic formula or we could complete the square okay. the majority of you will probably do quadratic formula so that's how um, approach this one. Okay. So our A is 1, our B is 7, and our C is negative 60. Okay. So plugging into the quadratic formula, and I'll give you a quadratic formula. Maybe I need to write it down here too. So negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2a. So when we plug in our numbers, we'll have the opposite of b, so negative 7, plus or minus b squared, so 7 squared, minus 4 times 1 times negative 60, and that's all over 2 times 1. Get us some more room here. So let's see, it's negative seven plus or minus square root of forty nine plus two forty over two. So 289, I think that is 17 squared. Let's see. Yep, it is. So square root of 289 is 17. So we need to use the plus sign one time, use the minus sign one time. So if we use the plus sign, let's see, negative 7 plus 17 would be 10. Divided by 2, that'll give us 5. If we use the minus sign, negative 7 minus 17 is negative 24. Divided by 2, negative 12. Okay. 5 and negative 12. Questions on that one? Doing quadratic? Yeah, I, I'll give it to you. Yeah. I'll probably put it on the board or something. I might have a formula sheet. We'll see. That's really about our only formula on this test, I think. I might just put it on the board. Right, number 10, same type of problem, just a different equation. 
This one, if you look for factors of one that give you negative six, it's not gonna factor. Okay. So we're down to quadratic formula or completing the square. If you want to do quadratic formula on these whenever you can, that's fine. Just make sure you know how to do it. Okay. All right. A will be 1. B is negative 6. C is 1. So we want the opposite of B, so this time that's 6. Plus or minus B squared, so negative 6 squared minus 4ac, so 4 times 1 times 1. Okay, all over 2 times 1. Okay, so let's see this 6 plus or minus the square root of 36 minus 4 over 2. On this one, we're not going to get a nice perfect square under there. It's 6 plus or minus square to 32 over 2. We need to see if we can simplify any. So we need to look at square to 32, see if we can do anything there. Um, we did the little factor tree earlier and saw that 32 is 2 to the fifth power. And so, that's 32. So anytime we have 2 is something we can bring 1 out front, so means we can bring 2 2's out front. Right. So we're going to end up with a 4 out front here. So that's 6 plus or minus 4 square root of 2 over 2. And if we split that into two fractions, it may be easier to see how to simplify. Okay. So 6 over 2 is 3. 4 over 2 is 2. So it's okay to leave it like that. You can give them to me separately if you want to, but it's all right. You can either say 3 plus minus 2 root 2, or you could say 3 plus 2 root 2 and 3 minus 2 root 2. I don't care. We're still on that one, especially simplifying since that was a little different. So like um, the six, all you do is take the square root of it. Like where does the those different twos come from? The different twos? Yeah. yeah, so that if you did the little tree, the little factor tree with thirty-two, we just already did it, so I didn't do it, but like that's two times sixteen, sixteen is two times eight, eight's two times four, and four is two times two. So you end up with five twos. I'll give you thirty-two. So if you rewrite it instead of square root of 32, if you rewrite it 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, you can just see every time we've got a pair because it's uh, index is 2. Right? So here's two twos, so we can bring one out front. Here's another two twos, so we can bring one out front and get the 4. There. Yeah. If you have more than one thing out front, you multiply. Yeah. Good question. Okay. Questions on... Any other part of it? Good. Okay. All right, let's see. What number one? Number 11. Tells us to find the difference, or in other words, we want to subtract. So really, we do this one just like we did when we were working with the algebraic expressions on that other one. Um, the only real thing we have to remember on this problem is to uh, make sure we're distributing the minus sign. 
So we'll have negative 9 plus i, and then minus 3, and that turns into plus 8i. Okay. And then we combine like terms, so negative 9 minus 3, negative 12. And 1i plus 8i, a plus 9i, and then since it said a plus bi form, we want to make sure we've got it in this order. That's it. Just have to be careful with the signs on, on that one. Questions on that one? Mm. All right. Number 12. Let's find the product. So we're multiplying complex numbers. On these, we can treat it just like a variable, treat the i just like a variable until we go to simplify. And then when we start simplifying, what do we need to look out for? You remember? Okay, we'll wait. We'll see if we get so let's multiply. If we do the first terms, four times one is four. Do the outer terms, four times i, four i. Do the inner terms, negative two i times one, negative two i. And then when we do the last terms, negative two i times i, we get negative two what? I squared. So the thing we need to remember when we go to simplify, well, not t, i squared, what's that equal? Negative one. Negative one. Yeah. So this is going to be a negative one. Okay, so we'll have four. We can combine the i terms if we want to. So plus four i minus two i plus two i. And then negative two times negative one plus two. Then if we combine the like terms we have now and put it in a plus bi form, four plus two is six plus two i. Just gotta remember, can't leave, we don't wanna leave i squared in our answer. Question on that one? Okay. 13 says evaluate the quotient. Remember when we're dealing with these complex numbers, we're working with a quotient, really it's more like rationalizing. We're going to multiply by something over itself. So on this one, even if you don't remember what it's called, what are we going to multiply by? Conjugate, yeah, so what is the conjugate? This one's the conjugate of the denominator at the bottom. Right. So 9 minus 5i. That's right. Change the sign in the middle. Okay. So multiply by the conjugate of the denominator. Then on top, We've got FOIL method here, so these numbers are a little bit on the big side. Uh, 6 times 9 is 54. 6 times negative 5i is negative 30i. Negative i times 9, negative 9i. And then negative i times negative 5i is plus 5i squared. On the bottom, you can do the shortcut for multiplying conjugates okay, um, if you want to. So if you have a plus bi times a minus bi, you'll get a squared plus b squared. Okay. If you forget that, it's no big deal. We can just do FOIL method again. Um, so I have 81 minus 45i plus 45i. And then 5i times negative 5i is negative 25i squared. 
So here we've got two I squareds. We've got to change it to negative ones. And in the middle, on the bottom, those cancel out. Okay. So let's see, on the top, we have 54 minus 39i, and then when we do 5 times negative 1, that turns that into minus 5. On the bottom, we'll have 81 minus 25 times negative 1, so plus 25. What do we get there? Uh, 54 minus 5, 49 minus 39i, over 106. And then this one wants us to put it in A plus BI form, so we just split it into two fractions. So we'll have 49 over 106, minus 39 over 106. Uh, and I don't think either one of those will, no 39 will not, 49, 71. No, they won't simplify anymore, so. We're good there. I probably won't give you numbers quite that big, so it's easier to tell if it'll simplify or not. Just because of how this is worded, it says put it in A plus B I form. That makes it technically not exactly what it wants, but it's real close. Yeah. It's equivalent. Saying 39 I over 106 is equivalent. Um, so is the thing we had before that, 49 minus 39 I over 106. That's equivalent also. It's just not in the exact form that it said on this one. It would be a minor thing for sure. Okay. Other questions on that one? Remember when you do the conjugate, you do the conjugate at the bottom, and remember that means we're changing the sign in between. Okay. And then not the, not the sign out front, not on the nine on this one, just the one in between. Right. Number 14, I want to simplify the power of i. Got i to the 1802 power. Okay. So on these, the way well, I do them, I break it down into powers of i squared. So if we take 1802, divide that by 2, we'll get 901. I know I squared is negative 1. And if we raise negative 1 to an odd power, is it going to be positive 1 or negative 1? Negative 1. Yeah, odd powers you get negative, even powers you get positive. So negative 1. And I guess technically on this one it says put it in A plus BI form. So. That's pretty picky, but negative one, okay, we'll just leave that. Okay. Now, you can punch it in your calculator and get negative one. That's not what I'm going to want. I'm going to specify. Make sure you show me how you got there. Okay, so... Um, uh, if you just give me what's on the left, okay, that's not not really what I'm looking for. So, odd power, odd power will give you negative, and even power will give you yeah. Because you can think about um, if you do the second power, negative times a negative, that gives you positive. Uh, 
So evens are positive and odds are negative. I mean, there's only four possible answers, too, so uh, either you get one, negative one, I, or negative I. Show me how you got there. Okay? Show me how you broke it down and got there. Okay. 15. Let's find all real solutions of the equation. And the thing that stands out looking at this one is that we've got this fifth power here. Okay. So we've got a degree is bigger than two. So we really only have one method for attacking these and that's factoring. Okay. So we should see what we have in common that we can factor out. Everything's already on one side so we're good to go there. What do you see in common? Yeah, there is an 8. 8 times 9 is 72. So there is an 8. And then we also have an x in common. So we can factor out 8x. If we do that, we've taken out the 8, taken out 1x, so that'll leave us x to the fourth. And then that'll leave us 9. A couple of ways of going about things from here. If you realize that, that in the parentheses, x, fourth, x to the fourth minus nine is a difference of two squares and you can factor it again, you can do that. Okay. Um, and then you actually have one more round of factoring you can do. But you'll end up having to take the square root there okay, on one of the equations. So another way you can attack it okay, is we can split it up right here. And we can say 8x equals 0. We divide both sides by 8. That gives us x equals 0. Okay. For the other one, okay, we can add 9 to both sides and take the fourth root. Okay, take the fourth root. So x would be plus or minus, because it's an even index, 4th root of 9. 4th root of 9 doesn't come out even, so that's fine. So we've got, that one's pretty ugly, okay? We've got two solutions, we've got, or three, we've got 0, and then plus or minus 4th root of 9. Question on that one? A little weird with that fourth root on that particular one. It wouldn't simplify any, so. Okay, 16. Let's find all real solutions. We have a rational equation, because we've got a variable in the denominator. So if we have a rational equation, we want to multiply through by the least common denominator. So what's our least common denominator going to be on this one? We've only got one denominator, so it's just z plus 4. Yeah. Okay, z plus 4. So have z times z plus 4. plus 64 over z plus 4 times z plus 4. And then that'll equal 12 times z plus 4. So then our z plus 4s in the second one cancel out. Let's see what that leaves us with. Um, z times z, z squared. 
z times 4 is 4z. And then we're just left with plus 64 on that one. On the other side, we get 12z plus 48. So numbers are kind of creeping up there in size. And it's quadratic, so want to get everything on one side. So let's see, we can subtract 12z from both sides. So 4z minus 12z would be negative 8z. Subtract 48 from both sides. So 64 minus 48 is 16. Then what from there? I'm just going to move it over here and rerun it. What are our options? Yeah, you can do quadratic formula, or you can factor, or you can do completing the square. And since we've done quadratic formula so much, I'm going to factor this one. So this is not too bad to factor. We need factors of 16. That give us negative 8. So negative 4 and negative 4 will work. Set each one equal to 0 and solve. Since they're the same, I'm just going to do 1. Get z equals 4. And then we need to check it to make sure that if we plug that in, we're not going to get into an undefined situation, but since it's positive 4, we're okay. If we put 4 in here, we'll get 8 on the bottom there. That's all right. We'd, what we would not want is we would not want negative 4. Right? Negative 4 would not work because then we would get 0 on the bottom there. And 4 is okay, so... Enter. And if you check it, that's 4, and then 64 divided by 8 is 8, so 4 plus 8 is equal to 12. Question on that one? I'm not going to give you one where it's hard to find the LCD. You just need to know what to do with it. Okay. Seventeen. We have a radical equation. Which, so on these, we've got a square root on this one, so we would want to get our square root by itself on one side. We've already got that starting out. And then what do we do to get rid of the square root? You're on the right track. We're going to... Yeah, second power. That's probably what you were thinking, yeah. yeah. Square it. Square both sides. Yeah. Okay. So if we square the left side, it cancels out with the square root. We get 8x minus 1. And then on the other side, 9 squared... That's 81. If we add 1 to both sides, 8x equals 82. Divide both sides by 8. Get something that will simplify. Looks like they're both even, so let's see this. 41 over 4. 41's prime, so that's it. Not a pretty answer, but we should check it. I mean, calculator would come into play here. It would be, make it nice for us, but um, so if we do 8 times 41 over 4, we'll see what that is. And that's 82 
So we would have the square root of 81 when we subtract 1 equals 9, and that, that checks out. So you do need to check them because you can get extraneous solutions on those. Questions on that one? No? Okay. Got to remember to bring like a candy basket or something in here. Tempt y'all to talk a little bit. Right, number 18. Got a inequality. So on these, we can treat the inequality symbol just like an equal sign as long as we don't multiply or divide by a negative number. If we multiply or divide both sides by a negative number, what do we do? Flip, we'll flip the sign. So this one's less than or equal to, so we flip it to greater than or equal to. Okay? So I don't know if that'll happen or not. Let's see. So a um, couple of moves we got to make. I'm going to, I like my x to be on the left side with inequalities. So I'm going to add 9 to both sides. 9x, sorry. So negative 3x plus 9x gives me 6x. Then I can subtract 9 from both sides. So 6x is less than or equal to negative 2. It's okay, we don't have to flip. And then divide both sides by 6. If we reduce, 2 will go into top and bottom, so x is less than or equal to negative one-third. We also want to shade our answer on the number line. So negative one-third, I, I will probably just give you a blank one and you can just mark where you want negative one-third to be. Um, here, negative one-third is like here somewhere. Okay. And then we want the x is less than, less than or equal to negative one-third, so it's a closed circle. And so less than, which way do we shade? To the left, yeah, so we would shade over here. Okay. Yeah, we'll do it. So interval notation. It's the other way we want our answer. So to me, it's easier to do the number line first. Not this was a negative one third. Okay. So in interval notation, think about how small can our answer be? It goes forever to the left. So that's what do we what do we use for that? Negative infinity. Infinities always have a parenthesis with them. And then how big can our answer get? It goes all the way up to negative one third. And do we include negative one third? Yeah, because it had a or equal to, or looking at the number line, it had a closed circle, so we're going to include negative one third, so we'll have a bracket there. If I can get my pen to cooperate and have a bracket there. So if you have the equal bar, then you'll have a bracket, a square bracket. If you do not have the equal bar, we'll have another parenthesis you know, where we're leaving the number out. And if you don't have the equal bar, we'll have an open circle instead of a closed circle. Right, questions on that one? Um, if you feel like you need to practice several of those, you can go back to the assignment and do practice another version. I think it'll let you do that. So. Okay. Um, one more here. Just want the equation of the circle, and I'll give you the standard form. Okay, I just want to see if you can plug it in. Okay. Thank you. 
So I guess we do have two, two formulas. Okay. So on this one, that'll be our H, number with the X. Negative eight will be our K. Radius is our R. So we'll have X minus negative nine squared plus uh, minus negative eight squared equals six squared. And if we clean that up, we can get rid of the double negatives. I right, would have X plus six, I mean plus nine, sorry, squared plus Y plus eight squared equals 36. Is that blue hard to see? It's okay. All right. Shows up a little better on the dark screen. Not mean. Not mean. Maybe one. Were you hoping for more? Were you hoping for more or less? More. Oh, you wanted less? Oh, you didn't like it? Okay. Well, that's not bad. All right. Okay. Other questions? Can't think of anything? All right. That's all I've got. Um, if you do have questions, feel free to hang around. Okay, I'll be glad to. Hang around till the end of class time.